A very interesting IPO is about to open this Wednesday on the 28th of July. It's a large issue which will give the company, which is to be listed in a few weeks, a market cap of between six to 7,000 crores. But it's not about the size, but more about the uniqueness of the company which is, deb which is set to debut in the Indian markets. Uh, it's India's first microfinance institution and probably only the world's second microfinance institution to go public. The first one, of course, was the Mexican company Compatomos. And now, probably, I will be corrected if I'm wrong, but SKS Microfinance is only the world's second microfinance company of any size to go public. Uh, now, a microfinance company might be compared with NBFCs and lending institutions, but the business model is vastly different in terms of the spreads, the risks, the interest rates charged, and the, uh, and the kind of universe it reaches out to. Uh, all look very, very different from uh, the traditional NBFCs which are listed in the Indian space. To talk about this issue, the pros and cons of it, and whether it presents an investment opportunity for you, Vikram Akula, founder and chairman of SKS Microfinance, and Uday Kotak, um, executive vice chairman and managing director of Kotak Mahindra Bank, in his capacity as lead manager to the issue and also as a banker who's seen this business from up very close. So, gentlemen, thanks very much for joining you, uh, for joining me. Vikram, let me start by asking the most fundamental of questions. Since this is a different beast, a new kind of beast which is coming to the market for the first time, can you start by laying out the essential differences as you see it between a microfinance company and the traditional NBFC or the finance company which we have quite a few listed in India? So, Dale, as you said, this is a vastly different type of stock. This is very much a concept stock. And what we do in microfinance is Yes, we're looking to provide financial services to the poor, but the, the ultimate mission of doing that is that this is a means of helping them have the financial tools to slowly earn income and step-by-step step get out of poverty. So in that sense, many of the metrics in financial services don't necessarily apply to this type of business. Mm. The apprehension, while the objective everyone lords, the apprehension, Vikram, would be is where do you draw the line between the social objective and the profit ob objective because your investors would get in purely driven by the, by the profit objectives. Well, we think that this new generation of microfinance actually ties both the commercial and the social quite well. As you know, Professor Mohammed Yunus of the Grameen Bank founded the concept of microfinance and the concept of using groups uh, and lending to the poor through a group lending mechanism. What we've done as a new generation of microfinance is actually show that through a commercial approach you can actually raise significantly more capital and put more money in the hands of more poor women. And in that, in, in so doing, we actually think there's no conflict between the social and the commercial. In addition, because of the way in we, which we use our distribution channel to do just not credit, but a wide range of financial products, you actually can bring a whole range of products to the poor at a low cost relative to, to their other options, and in so doing, create social value. Now, the numbers also speak for themselves for the investor side. This is a hugely profitable business, and we deliberately structure it that way because we want investors to continue to put more and more money into the hands of the poor. Uday, what do you think? Uh, is the market ready for this concept? Uh, uh, Uday, I think, uh, let me just uh, first step back and say that one of uh, our jobs as uh, bankers and investment bankers in India is to present to the capital markets the new and emerging opportunities which come out. Um, we normally like to do it with sector leaders because that's the best way of presenting a new emerging sector to the capital markets. If you recollect a few years ago, we did it in real estate with BLF and thereafter, of course, you've seen the whole sector in the capital markets. And we believe microfinance is a new emerging sector in India. And we are really delighted to get that sector introduced to the capital markets with the market leader in that sector, which is SKS Microfinance. Now coming to the issue about the challenges of this sector uh, and the opportunities. My first uh, belief is that what SKS and the sector is demonstrating is what is good for the poor can be also profitable. And this is the very important aspect which SKS Microfinance has demonstrated if you look at its uh, performance over the last few years. And this is the opportunity where you are saying that a huge amount of 
poor in this country and here is a business model which serves the social objective and is a profitable business and obviously SKS as the market leader has demonstrated quality and we are therefore happy to bring a company of this scale size and quality to the public markets of course the challenge is that how do you make sure that these standards of what is appropriate for capital markets get maintained as the sector opens up to the capital markets mm. the first apprehension of the automatically and you would appreciate that as a as a banker uh, that uh, would be of recovery of capital would be of asset quality because you're reaching out to a a social strata which is not the strongest of course uh, the interest rates charge are commensurately higher but there is that issue of whether uh, you could be stuck with a lot of delinquencies and a huge amount of uh, non performing assets is that a legitimate fear that people may have about this or does the data suggest that it's not as sticky or thorny a problem as people would uh, figure it out to be i think the data so far suggests that uh the levels of delinquencies are pretty low however you know the journey of a sector is measured over long periods of time and therefore i am happy that we are move, coming to the capital markets with the best known high quality and the largest microfinance company in, in india and this is a classic opening up of the sector and you want to make sure that you come with quality the numbers and the statistics are extremely robust at this stage and i would like to believe that if uh, if you are the right management team which sks microfinance under vikram and his team have demonstrated there seems to be a very significant opportunity provided continuing execution is as what the markets capital markets would like to see as you scale up the business do you see that as one of the most legitimate uh, challenges Sure. Now, to the contrary, what we find is that the poor are extraordinarily robust, extraordinarily good borrowers. We've seen in a 12-year history uh, net NPAs of 0.33 percent. That's less than a half percent of the net NPAs. And this is, mind you, giving collateral-free, that's unsecured loans to the poor. I think the lesson here is that. So now as a country we haven't given the poor a chance. We haven't given them the due respect that they earn and the way in which we've done so at SKS Microfinance shows that if you do put faith in the poor, they are extraordinarily hard working, they're resilient, they're entrepreneurial and they pay back 15,000 crore rupees with a 99.5% repayment rate. That is very different than anything we've seen in any other conventional banking and the reason why this is simply not about banking this is about creating social capital these are groups that support each other that are there for each other and in so doing you get this extraordinarily high you know asset quality so i think it's very different from banking in that sense and i think that if we do give the poor a chance really truly give them an opportunity you'll see that they are quite capable quite resilient quite hard working and do have an ethic to repay the loans that they take how scalable is this business vikram i mean on a small base of course you've scaled it up to significant size it's almost 1000 crores of top line that has been delivered on the last disclosed numbers but from here how fast can or how rapidly can you scale this up see if you look at our numbers today 6.8 million clients close to a billion dollar portfolio outstanding i think that in itself is larger than some banks in the country it's certainly by account size the largest nbfc in the country so we've already proven as a sector that you can have tremendous growth but what's even more exciting from a business perspective is that if you look at the penetration we've only served about 15% of the clients the poor households in the country which we estimate at about 150 million poor households and only 22 million are served now if you combine that with SKS's historical track record you know a pat growth five year growth of 223% a client growth of 141% a portfolio growth of 162%. You see that here you've got a company in SKS Microfinance that has a demonstrated capability and you have a significant growth opportunity. For so from a commercial perspective, we see nothing but continued opportunities to serve more poor households and to grow this business. Would they come in on that? I mean if the business is does offer such kind of scalability but, and but, you know but the numbers that Vikram is talking about touching 6.8 million accounts a billion dollar portfolio 
why would banks not want to cover up this space? I mean, would it be because of lack of adequate uh, regulatory structures on their half? Because why can't the State Bank of India do quite effortlessly what Vikram is doing? Uh, Udyan, first let me say as a bank we are truly delighted financing uh, the sector, especially companies of the quality of SKS and therefore as a bank we consider that itself as a good opportunity uh, going forward. Moving on from there to be for banks to be doing it directly, I think one of the things which is a challenge for banks is the ability to handle that ticket size and cost to serve and deep inroads into the social networks which companies like SKS have demonstrated. Therefore, ability to operate at that ticket size in social networks and make it work is the USP of the microfinance institutions as it stands today. And banks will obviously need to do a lot of work to be able to effectively do what companies like SKS have done and therefore credit to Vikram and his team for seeing an opportunity and being able to bring it at the ticket size and uh, cost per ticket which is truly enormous. Mm. Vikram, do you see public sector banks as competition for you because uh, while private sector banks might have uh, some uh, imperatives or constraints for which they might not enter your space, I mean, the ru regional public sector banks, even rural banks, sure. do, do you see them as competition? No, in fact, we don't see our work as, as competitive when it comes to the state-run regional rural bank network, the PSU banks. In fact, we see what we do as a complement to the effort that, the tremendous effort that those banks have done in terms of financial inclusion. Now, the thing is, uh, those banks, while they do provide loans and oftentimes subsidize loans to the poor, what we do know is that the loans are not sufficient. The no loans are not large enough so that the poor can actually take up enter in income generating you know, activities. And what we do, we see ourselves as complementing that. In addition, we do have one significant advantage, which is we do a last mile delivery to the poor. All our transactions, all our delivery are doorstep. We actually go to villages, and that's where these transactions happen. Now, from the perspective of the poor, that's very significant because typically if you have to go to a state-run bank, if you think about you know, the number of trips you have to make to a bank branch, the lost wages, the bus fares, the food charges, sometimes the fees, the broker's fees involved in writing applications for an illiterate, illiterate person, basically all of those things no longer exist when we do microfinance at the doorstep. So even from their perspective, this is a very competitive you know, offering. Having said that, since there is such a need, we actually see ourselves as complementing the work of the state-run you know, uh, regional rural banks towards financial inclusion. At this point, a quick break. Uh, keep watching. We are back.